We're joined by Caitlin Lowe. Um, whenever you guys are ready. Well, we just heard some really uh, strong, wonderful words from Logan's teammates on her and oh. what she's bringing to the, to the team. It was something else. Uh, some freshmen can contribute right away. Others take a couple of years. Where is she in that boat? Well, I can tell you she contributed right away in the practice setting, that's for sure. I think it takes a special freshman to walk in amongst Ali Skaggs and Soph Carroll and Carly Scoopin and hold their own. And she's one of our best infielders, that's for sure. And she elevated our entire practice. Um, she knows her role very well. She's developing offensively. But, you know, I think the most I've been the most impressed by how the freshmen have handled stepping in and just embracing the culture that these these older girls have set. For my knowledge, how long have you how long have you known her for? Logan, I mean, she was a little nugget coming to camp. I mean, yeah. So um, it's a great question. She probably started coming to camps when she was like 11 or 12 years old. I would guess. Make her physically. Obviously, you mentioned little nugget, and a lot of people, you know, she may be a little bit on the thinner side. I mean, does she have to be a little bit get a little bigger physically to? to well, just it? to be clear, I looked like Logan in high school. I mean, I I think I weighed 105 pounds on my driver's license. I was, you know, I had I gained 15 pounds of pure muscle my freshman year. Um, and I don't think it's remaking her physically. We're not going to turn her into Ali Skaggs and Carly Scubin. That's just not possible. And our conversation yesterday at the plate was actually, you know, what she brings to the table that they don't. And she is scrappy as heck offensively. She can hit good spin. But her success looks like singles and doubles. It doesn't look like doubles and home runs like other people. And um, that's why we recruited her, because it's hard to throw to her zone and she can hit all spin through the infield and that's all we needed to do is get on base for those for those big boppers to come up and do do their thing so um yeah we're getting her bigger faster stronger just like anyone but i also don't want her to change her identity is he moving back behind the plate i assume <laughs> um what's that like going to be like do you think for her i mean going from third back she hasn't been a starting catcher in a while I think it's going to make a huge impact on our team, and it already has. And um, third base, you communicate a lot. Catcher, you're the leader of the field in a lot of ways. Um, up the middle is where the leadership lies normally. And um, I've seen a change in how our pitchers react in certain situations. You know, there's this tunnel vision thing that happens when the battery is just so locked in and connected. Um, and she's taken the time in the bullpen to work her tail off and make those connections with each of our pitchers um, so that when they struggle, she can bring them right back. Um, and I think, you know, more so than what she's going to contribute offensively and defensively, she's going to make us grow as a team in that way. What do you figure is the biggest lesson you took away from year one? There's a lot of lessons. Um, the biggest lesson, I think, um, you know, our team meeting, our very first team meeting this year, um, we as a staff kind of walked away and really felt like it was us, um, not just as a staff, but um, it was the identity that we knew this team had. And it's just different. It's different every year. And I've truly felt like this group and this leadership has put their own stamp on this program in a way that's never been done before since I've been here. And um, I'm excited to see what that version looks like. But, you know, it's hard in a transition when if it's not broke, don't fix it kind of thing. You don't want to change a lot. Um, but we knew going into this year, and I don't think we, we would have known what we wanted to say if we didn't live through what happened last year um, and the ups and downs and the adversity of that. So um, we just feel like we're settled in. We feel more like ourselves. And I feel like um, the leadership of this team has taken on just – a new identity that I love. Talk about that stamp that this program hasn't seen before. What, what does that mean? Um, I won't say we haven't seen it before, but it's just they're they're so buying into um, you know who they are as individuals and people, and they're accepting of every single person. And um, you know, one through eighteen, I have such a great vibe of who they are as people, as teammates as performers, all of it. And they are really, they're the biggest cheerleaders for even 
the people that are in front of them in the depth chart, if that makes sense. And um, I just, I love the vibe of this group and I'm excited for them to get to fight together. Kate, I'm gonna ask you the same question I asked Jed Fish a few minutes ago as this transfer portal thing continues to progress. He lost three kids to USC, mm -hmm. you lost two kids to UCLA. Mm -hmm. Would you be for or against a rule that, per, that, that allow kids not to, make kids have to transfer out of conference versus inside of conference? You know, I, I don't have a yes or no answer for that. I think there's a lot of great things with um, the rules of the transfer portal, and I think there's some things that need to get fixed. Um, but at the same time, I just, I don't know. Like, if you would have asked me in July, I might not have had the same answer. Um, right now, I feel great about this team that we have. So um, you never want someone in your program that doesn't want to be there. And I think that's the biggest takeaway, is that we have 18 people um, fighting for this A on their chest, and they believe in it to their core, just like I do, just like our staff does. Um, so really, at the end of the day, like, I love where we're sitting right now. Like Olivia is the number two catcher in the nation as a recruit. Mm -hmm. Is she the plan, or is Izzy, or still figuring it out? Um, I think they're both going to get time. I think in in college softball these days, you can't rely on just one. I think you got to take innings off of anybody's body. So I think um, you know Izzy has, you know, she's developed an absolute uh, cannon for an arm right now, and she's worked really hard at it. Um, so I think, and, and the leadership wise, she brings a lot and I think Liv's going to get her innings too. Um, I think they both bring, you know, Olivia to step in to this role with an experienced team and use her voice on day one, that was a big deal to me. Um, it takes people years to get to that point, to command a field where they're the youngest one on it. Um, so I think they're both going to get some time in significant innings and they both are hitting the ball very well too. So that'll get them in the lineup. As far as health right now, where are you guys, is everyone healthy heading in? I've heard there have been nicks and <laughs> with the pitching especially. Yeah, we've been banged up a little bit. Um, I anticipate that everybody's going to be good to go on Thursday, but definitely working towards our healthiest selves. And as you know, with any college softball season, you're never going to feel 100%. So getting through, um, you know, it's just a, it's a different sport. We've got five or six games in a weekend. You're not going to feel great all the time. Um, but we're getting there, and um, yeah, we're happy to have five on staff too to make those instances a little bit easier. What have you seen um, from hitting from Scoop, Allie, and, and Izzy? They all said that they've changed a little bit from last year, whether it's their approach, whether it's Izzy and, and Allie really tweaking the, everything as they go. They hunt. They hunt, and I think gives me goosebumps like when you watch our scrimmages they're like this plate's mine and good luck that's what the mentality looks like it's not what they say but because they would never and you know Ali Skaggs and she's the most humble person in the entire world but um, they hunt and that's their plate and that comes with knowing and trusting your swing and then it becomes about competing and you know when you get too mechanical in certain instances it takes you away from that competition mode and right now um, that confidence is spreading to our younger kids, which is what you want to see. Um, and the maturity as a hitter, you know, like when you've hit at the World Series with however many thousands of people there, um, you walk a, uh, just a different way. That's how they walked into the fall. And um, I know Izzy and Skag specifically have, you know, become very good students of the game and they pick each other's brains all the time. And they're all in the same hitting group for a reason too. Um, and yeah, I just think the maturity has done wonders for them. How often did you retool your own swing? Retool my own swing. Well, I don't know if you remember, but my freshman year, I had a bad angle that looked like this. They called me Scorpion in the Pac-12 because it was pointing the other direction and we were just dabbling with some things and that was my whole freshman year. And then the next year I looked different. It's you know, you hit so much at practice, sometimes it's a bad thing when you hit too much and you think about things too much, but, um, you know, Coach Kendra was always awesome with, like, if I can get you to feel it, then it'll cross over. So um, sometimes drills turn into actual swings. But I, I loved, um, Ali Skaggs just posted on Twitter a picture of her in 2020 and, and this year, and it's, 
like to me I look at those two pictures and I say wow that that one is like crazy confident hitter knows what her swing feels like and knows what she wants and um, to see that progression is really cool not just on the softball field but as a person and as a leader too. Tell that Jasmine is a coach's daughter. 100%. I could tell that in eighth grade when I first met her. Um, she, uh, this is back in early recruiting when we were watching 14 and under, and um, she was a center fielder that was able to read a swing, adjust outfielders accordingly to whether someone was late, wrote, they were going to roll over according to what her pitcher was throwing, and I was in awe. Like, you can teach kids for four years and sometimes they don't pick that up. And she just had a knack of watching the game, feeling the game out defensively, which is a huge thing in softball because most people want to hit. She takes pride in her defense. Um, yeah, just knowing the ins and outs and um, all of it. And you can tell. And when you meet her dad, she's, you know, she soaked up everything he's had to give her. So what are your expectations for Jasmine this year? Well, she came back a new person in the fall, I thought. Um, she grew up a lot last year, but I thought she made it a point to come back ready to go and really take on a leadership role this year. So she's moved over to center field. That's her natural position, so it didn't surprise me. Um, I think she's gotten way more mature at the plate. Um, her confidence has grown. She knows what she wants to do with the ball. Um, I'm excited for her this year because I think she's not as worried about things that she would have been worried about last year. She's fixed, um, she's fixed her feet, she's in the box all the time, and I give her credit because she went up to you know, an umpire that works our scrimmages and she said, let me know. And not a lot of people are gonna do that. They don't wanna draw attention to it. And she was like, I wanna, that's not gonna happen this year. So um, just big props to her and um, she's actually swinging away a little bit too. So we'll, we'll see how, um, how that fits into our lineup as well. She seemed to be doing really well at that lead-off position last year. So is that where you expect her this year? You know, it's crazy. We have a handful of lead-off options. I like her there. Um, you know, her and uh, Blaze Behringer, they get on base a lot. Their on-base percentage is so high, and they're just scrappy. Um, and they can do a lot of different things. So, um, you know, when we sit in the office and try to make lineups, it's kind of crazy sometimes how low people get in it. And you're like, wow, she should not be that low. But she's that low because we have a lot of good options. So we're excited to see what that looks like all put together because we haven't seen it since the fall. And really, there's been a lot of development since then, too. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>